Name phase. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be looking at the progress made on fixing a bug that has plagued the emulation of an arcade game in MAME for quite a while now. I don't usually do videos to highlight regression fixes in MAME because fixing what once already worked is generally not considered to be progress and most regressions are short lived, occurring as part of the natural flow of the project as our understanding of how things work evolves. There are, however, a handful of long-term regressions. There are very, very few of these because the general direction of the project has been towards greater correctness and stability, and we have a far better understanding of how things work now than was even possible in the earlier days, but they do exist. The emulation of Atari's Rampart was one of those long-term regressions. It broke in MAME 0.124, which was released on the 24th of March 2008. MAME 0.124 contains some significant changes from former project head Aaron Giles in the areas relating to the Motorola 68000 prefetch and the Atari slapstick. The 68000 is the main processor driving the game, while the slapstick is one of Atari's most famous protection chips and is an acronym of Storage Logic Array, Protection from Software Thievery Integrated Circuit. 12 years is a long period of time for a regression to remain in MAME, and in that time, Aaron, who was the go-to developer for the Atari drivers, had taken a step back from the project. I'm going to start the playback of a recording of the game, which should give you a feel for how it plays, and will eventually show this book. I'll talk more about this recording and how it came to be shortly. There are a number of reasons why this bug took so long to fix. An important factor is the bug only occurs when you reach level 4 on the most difficult game mode, Veteran, at which point the game would malfunction, allowing you to build castle walls over the sea, with an eventual soft lock if you persevered playing after that point. Even on the easier difficulty modes, this is a difficult game, and due to its unconventional gameplay, which has since been described as Proto Tower Defense, it's not the most widely played game, and just getting to level 4 is a real challenge. Going off on a brief tangent and trying to look at what might have influenced the game from within Atari, I can only really think of Missile Command, except what you have here is closer to an overhead medieval Missile Command with strategy elements between the action phases. Such strategy elements were uncommon in arcade titles, with the only notable example coming to mind being Konami's Tactician, which tried something similar back in the 80s but with the underlying game being a single screen shooter close to the likes of Galaxian. Considering how many Atari games failed at the prototype or location testing stage of development, it amazes me that this one made it out the door at all, as it feels more like something suited to a home system. Back to the issue at hand, the first concrete report of the bug in question, with evidence, was in 2018, already a whole decade after the regression had occurred. Prior to that, there were some reports from users of the issue being encountered, but when asked if they could reproduce it without cheats or save states, they could not. These early reports were enough to raise suspicion, however due to the lack of reproducibility, the problem was therefore thought to be due to cheats interfering with either the game logic or the protection handling, something not unheard of. It appears in hindsight that the players reporting the bug meant they couldn't get to level 4 without cheats or didn't realise the malfunction was connected to reaching that point in the game and thought it was just random. In 2018, a user named Rodney Lives would be the first to establish that this issue was not connected to the cheats, was 100% reproducible, and he would be the first to trace the regression back to main version 0.124. A save state was provided, but save states aren't always the most practical way to get to the root of a problem, as sometimes, especially with protection, the issues causing the problem can have occurred at an earlier point. As I mentioned, by this point Aaron had taken a step back from development, so despite this finding, there was nobody immediately available with a deep knowledge of the game and hardware to take a look at it, so the report sat in limbo for a while. A few months ago the issue came up again and was revisited, this time with MAME user Rodney Liz providing .imp input recording files for both the current version of MAME and the one where the problem did not occur. While the 12 year difference between the MAME versions was not ideal and meant the same input recording could not be used for both, it at least allowed us to see the same scenarios play out, one where the bug manifested itself and the other where it didn't. We finally had a solid reproduction case and a working reference. The video you are seeing right now is that input recording being played back in a version of MAME where the bug was present. I'm now going to fast forward the playback to shortly before the start of stage 4 where the bug occurs. Thank you. 
As you can see, at this point, castle pieces are being built on the water, and there is a clear disconnect between what you can see on the screen and what the game thinks is happening. It takes a long time to make progress in this state, as the corrupt level data means you can only destroy roughly two of the enemy fleet in any given round. I'm going to jump ahead now to closer to the end of the level, at which point you'll be able to see the eventual soft lock that occurs when the game attempts to move on to level 5. I think we can all agree, in this state the game is broken, it doesn't work properly, and prior to the current fix, it had been broken for 12 years. Let's now switch the video being played to one using the same input recording, but being played back under a version of MAME with the bug fixed. I'll also talk a little about who fixed it, and provide some insight into the issues involved. The bug would eventually be fixed by perennial MAME developer Olivia Galibert, who took time away from his many other MAME ventures to investigate and ultimately fix the bug with the aid of the input recordings provided by Rodney Lives and the debugging functionality included within MAME. While providing full details of how this fix works and exactly what was wrong is too technical for the scope of this video, a bit of background on how the slapstick operates should give you an idea of why this was such a challenge. The slapstick is a devious device, most protection devices rely on simple and often obvious communication using call response type protocols via ports or shared memory. It's usually relatively easy to find where the protection routines are in the game code. The slapstick on the other hand sits between the main processor, a Motorola 68000 in the case of Rampart, and one of the program ROMs. Rather than the simple call response method, the slapstick watches for certain access patterns including those of the CPU as it fetches not only data, but code. The order of these accesses is important, as they cause non-obvious shifts in the internal state of the slapstick, which in turn causes different banks of memory containing game code or data to be seen when specific patterns are recognised. The main source code contains a very good rundown of the logic behind this. The 68000 CPU prefetch, which I mentioned was changed at the same time as Rampart initially broke, is an important part of the equation here, as it affects the order in which the 68000 requests data from the ROM, something the slapstick can see, and something the developers of Rampart were aware of. Furthermore, due to how the slapstick is connected, it can trigger based on both accesses from the code being executed and mirror addresses from where data is fetched. If any part of this fails, or is missed, or ends up out of sequence, the memory bank being presented will end up incorrect. When Rampart fails, the bank of memory for the level no longer matches the level you see on the screen. This is why you can build on water, as the game thinks there is land there. This happened because the slapstick wasn't picking up the expected access patterns and wasn't changing the memory bank correctly as a result. Olivia's work involved looking at these slapstick state changes in both the broken version of MAME and the older working one, and then tracking down what was either being missed or being falsely triggered in the more recent one. This in turn required verification of the 68000 prefetch, verification of the patterns the slapstick was watching for, and ensuring MAME was both generating and the emulated slapstick was seeing all the correct signals needed to change the memory banks at the correct moments. Some things did turn out to be astray, with accesses from one area of memory not falling through to the slapstick, which in reality, due to only being connected to a subset of the address lines, could be triggered intentionally in some less than obvious ways. With all that tracked down, and the 68000 prefetch behaviour being verified as good enough, Olivia was able to identify where things were going wrong, and ensure the slapstick was seeing all the expected accesses and responding to them appropriately. 
As a result, the fix for this bug will appear in MAME 0.227, which is set to be released at the end of this month, December 2020. Anyway, so far the video replay you've been watching has been identical to the previous one as it's running off the same input file as before. I'm going to cut to just before the previous failure so that you can see what happens in the fixed version of MAME. So, what just happened? Well, at the point in the previous replay where the inputs would have caused the player's cursor to move across the water and build castle pieces there, the game disallowed that action. This, in turn, caused the replay file to become desynced and instead of the game glitching, the player's continued attempts at invalid actions had no meaningful effect, ultimately leading to the game being over when they failed to rebuild their castle. That might appear to be an anticlimactic end if you're expecting the level to be successfully completed instead, but it shows that the emulation is no longer susceptible to the bug, and with a human player instead of the replay file, that level could now be played as intended. As I mentioned at the start, it is rare for a regression to linger in MAME for this length of time, and this one was a victim of one part of MAME improving, but then requiring correction to another piece of code which was relying on previously incorrect assumptions. Sometimes those are the most annoying issues to fix, as you know the change you have made is correct, but something doesn't like it, or is very difficult to update to work again due to being heavily dependent on an incorrect behaviour. Should another slapstick bug crop up, there is at least now an additional developer, Olivia, with a deeper understanding of the device than they had prior. But all being well, this one has now been put to bed for the foreseeable future. Now, on to some bonus Rampart trivia. As modern MAME covers many systems beyond what you would find in the arcades, I'm going to bring up a specific port of Rampart, the NES port. Now, MAME's NES emulation could really do with a rewrite from the ground up, as it's based on absolutely ancient knowledge at this point, its roots are in the mess side of the project which at the time was shunned off to the side and didn't really advance in the ways it should have done. Despite this, I've been working on a few minor improvements to the emulation there, as I've been working on the enhanced VT plug and play systems which are based on NES technology. One feature missing from the base NES emulation was the colour emphasis effect on the palette, something not widely used as not all NES machines contain the same PPU, picture processing unit, and not all of those PPU variants supported in the same way. Rampart also serves as an example as to why the effect wasn't widely used, as even here it doesn't look like the code was adjusted properly for the effect to work on a PAL machine, but a US copy of Rampart on a US NES does use the emphasis bits to give the status bars for each player either a red or blue tint. Not a big deal, and MAME's NES palette isn't the best in the first place, but just something I thought you might find interesting and might not have been aware of. Anyway, that's all for now. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, thank Rodney Lives for providing the resources needed to fix the bug, and Olivia for taking the time out to fix it. Finally, if you've enjoyed this coverage and could hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, it would help build this channel and spread the word about what's going on with the main project these days.